All right, so we have a bunch of stuff to look at it here. Let's take a look at this shot. It's a longer shot with a monkey going down here. That's pretty cool. There's some spots here and there, I think, in terms of weight and snappiness, we could kind of push. Cool. That's that one. And then we're going to take a look at uh, the fox animation here. Cute. It's pretty cool. All right. And then you are also asking uh, about how to animate things here with some screenshots. All right. Let's go one by one. First, I would say I usually actually use this method. Uh, it could be kind of. It kind of depends on the complexity. I usually do this and then do the offsets with the hips and the chest controller um, when the character has to turn. But if it gets really long, that so far has helped me the most. If it's a shorter shot and you know there's not too much movement, I guess sometimes I do hips and chest only and leave uh, the main control uh, control at the origin. But I, I don't know. I don't remember many times when I did that, just because then sometimes I get lost in too much separation between the hips uh, and the chest. And it's also if suddenly the shot changes and I have to move the character into a specific direction where you know like it's pretend in this pose and there's a bigger jump or like a bigger turn or suddenly has to walk instead of being static then it gets pretty tricky because i don't want to cover a long distance animating hips and chests uh separately then i prefer the main um you know the main controller like here that can move the character forward and then i just do the offsets and the, the breakup separately with the controllers that's kind of how i approach it it's mostly future proofing it might not always be the best sometimes that might have been the better approach than the main controller approach but so far you know there's there are always so many changes at work it's rarely to get a shot and do a version or two and then you're done so i prefer to do kind of a future proofing and just being ready but you know, ultimately you can always constrain things to locators bake it out and bring it back to, to other controllers i mean there's always a way to fix things but um as a whole i would say that is my approach. Now, looking at reference for this here. It's cool. You got all that stuff here. It's neat. A little shake. I always like the little break up between the, uh, the head goes first, goes all the way back, has a, has a cute little move back there. Um, and then you have this one. Let's see her getting up again. All right. So, and you're mentioning that you're not going for photo real. It's still not super cartoony, so I think looking at reference is still pretty helpful. And to me, this is probably the biggest thing where you can show your cartooniness in terms of your snappiness. But it seems pretty real up until here with that faster pull in there. But it's cute. I like all of this. It's great, yeah. I think the only thing there's no reference for that. I don't know the, just visually, there's something about those back legs being so far apart. And I think it would be something where the steps would be closer together. So it's not always angle out this way, so it's a bit straighter. And then that on that last step, you you can take a step out into that pose for balance and a nicer silhouette. So you got these guys separated. That's kind of my only only point there. I think it would be cute if once he turns here to have an ever so slight where is he? He goes in there. Okay, so as he goes in here, and I'm actually curious how you're doing the that stuff in here. If you're just doing uh, vertis, uh, vertices you're pulling these or putting some form of deformer on the surface. It's nice, a nice little detail. But anyway, as the creature looks over this way, and this is happening here, it'd be kind of cute to do a little bit of of lifting of that surface, just a little bit of a, like a faster move up, so that it it catches the fox's attention, 
And because of that, I will make that head turn just down a bit sharper. At the very beginning, just a bit more of a reflex down to look. And then you can do another one, just another little move on that surface. And that makes him go, hmm, okay. And it would be all like small little moves. And then right before you do this, you would have a bigger, a bigger pop with maybe even like a little piece of snow doing this. And that prompts the creature to go down and wait and wait. And then do this. This is all super cool. I really like that. That's all really great. That shake is great. Yeah, I don't know. And that could be curious. Maybe, you know, maybe there is reference that has exactly that. There's just something that seems a very leany over this way with every leg like, angled like that. And then towards the end, how that back leg is just always so out. There's just something there visually. It feels like you want to be closer together. And then on that last step, get into this. And then just those changes there. And I wonder if you kind of push, since you're not going for photo reel, you can kind of push potentially the, the ears back or something like a post change in the ears to get into this. It's kind of like, uh, it's almost like eyebrows that go into a new emotion. It's like, hmm, what is that? Let me see. And then as this happens, same thing, you might bring them back to be, you know, slightly more alert, streamlined there. Just some things in the ears. Since you have awesome stuff in the snow already, like, you know, here, pieces of snow come with it and then drop. Be kind of cool. Not needed, obviously, at all. It's not that important. But. Yeah, that's the only thing. I would I would have some interplay between these two and then, so that the audience can go back and forth and kind of motivates and changes the behavior. So it's not just we're just looking at the fox all the time. That's kind of, that's kind of what I have for this. All right. And then looking at the monkey. So at the very beginning, when you already have this, like he's cleaning himself and getting ready and then he hears something so to me what i would do is i would start with this which is a nice line and then as you go down even if it's subtle up until here he would still go in a bit just start to lean him down a bit more and i would look at i think that's pretty okay the eye line yeah and then as you do this it's a bit more there's more involvement so then i will probably go even further down and it doesn't have to lean all the way down but my point is that Right now, as you do this, there's, I don't feel there's enough. And it will give it, you know, a bit more movement. It's not so static because there's a lot of arm movement and then the whole thing just feels kind of stiff. Also, if by the time here, imagine the mouth could be here. It's pretend you go this far down. There's, there's that much of a, of a change. Then when this happens, it's not just the head turn. Because again, you can look here at all those lines. There's not much of a change. But if he's lower and he goes up and gets back into this, there's a bit more contrast and a bit more alertness and a change in the in the in the body there. Again, speaking of body, there's a pretty big arm move here, and I would incorporate the shoulder a bit more, and then by now I'll definitely have more movement in the chest in Y, the Y rotation. It seems like that arm move is a bit isolated there. And I will probably, on that leg move, start with a rotation up first on the hip and then go up. And it feels like you're really scaling and stretching and translating that pelvis. So to me, I would wait till like the very last moment in here where both legs go up and then kind of squash into this. But right now, this feels more like you're translating the chest. It feels just a bit strange. So let's go back here. Um, now there's just some tiny detail things where this feels like an IK hand. Because you got the orientation of that forearm here, and this is the wrist. And then this goes straight, but the wrist is pretty much in the same orientation. There's no rotation in this angle. There's no change there. Um, there's no... I would probably do also a finger change. I know there's a relaxation in the pressure there, which is cool. But because there's nothing else, it just feels like this is... Mostly the same pose and orientation throughout until around here. So just a bit more detail work. The other hand seems better. 
And then when you have those jumps, you have a couple of those in here. I think what I would do is I will probably get into like during that section, just speed it up a bit. I would zip into this hole just a bit faster at the very beginning. It's a bit more zippy. And then you can hold this. And then you can zip down a bit more. Right now, there's just an ever so slight feeling of floatiness just because, especially that drop, it's just, and I'm talking two, three frames. It's just a bit zippier hold and a bit zippier down. And because you are zippier, then you could potentially bring up the eyebrows a bit, um, bring the ears back a bit, just kind of a for a visual stretch. It's not zippy enough to do a smear, but just a bit more so it doesn't feel like, well, once you're here, it's just kind of, I don't know, it just feels a bit too stiff. And just overall, the timing is just ever so slightly floaty. Right there. I think you can push that. Since you are pushing it already, I think it's great. I would just push it a bit more. What's cool, though, is that you got compression here on the toes. So as you put pressure on here, it would squash this, and you got the toes that go out. You could potentially even push that a tiny bit more. Definitely on this guy just a bit, but it's cool. I like that you have that in there. Then at the same time, this suddenly feels fast, where I feel like you want two or three frames of hang time, and then drop. Let's watch this. Let's see. Yeah, just a bit. I know this is so picky, but like I like the shot a lot. So I'm just super picky notes, which obviously do as you wish with them. But there's just something where once you get to here, where that drop suddenly feels like he's really being pulled down, but not in a zippy way like it would be here. It's just something that just feels suddenly light. And probably also because you get into this where the couple things where now you have to do a ginormously huge chest and head drag. Boom! And on the compression, a crazy overlap. But that being said, I will put a little bit in there. And then adjust probably the hand, the arm pose out to here. Now, you might run into some twinning here. So it might not be the best example drawing-wise. But what I'm reacting to is how you got that shape and color going into this. It's just kind of like that hand grows out of that head. Even this feels better. If there's anything where you can show, you know, even if it's down here and maybe that wrist is bent even more and then you got just that might already be different enough. But it's that and just the, the, the bent head here that also starts to feel like that head and that chest feels a bit locked. So that by here, I would lead with the head more and bring the head up to get into this. That's cool. That's cool. Let's see. Right through here feels a bit light. Right there. Yeah, that just feels suddenly slow. I think I'm reacting to how long it takes for the legs through here to get into this. And it's also you're hitting this pose and this orientation and it stays put. And because it's so slow, especially on that impact... I don't know, that to me just kind of stands out. So I would speed that up and and have you can I think you can have that over one frame. That pow pow because he's so fast. That's cool. Let's see here. I think here. I think it's pretty cool. He, I mean, he goes pretty fluently up and stops. And I wonder if I will, I would try, not again, this is a huge note, but I would try to bring up that root a bit higher, maybe to here, so that you can drop a bit more. It's a bit more up and down. And I know they can have fluid moves and just stay put, but I think I'm reacting to how this goes up and then this drops, this upper section. But then once you get up here with his butt, it's just kind of, that's the distance, that's the distance. It just seems like suddenly locked through there, giving this a bit of a stiff feel while this moves a lot, where I feel like this gets a bit too isolated. isolated. So I think if you do a bit of a bigger turn in the Y in terms of your hips, and then as you bring that head up, uh, that head, that left leg up, you take that hip up with it, and a bit of up and down in the root, just giving this a bit more break up. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. 
cold. There's something right through there. I think it's if he swings here and goes out, what I would try to do I would try to not overlap the hand and that leg. You don't have that that line that goes into the leg there. It's a bit too much overlap, even through here. I would start to separate these, and you might have to just cheat on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, so that it's a bit cleaner in the silhouette. But I will bring this to a point where the legs are a bit more bent, especially that left leg. You can see that bend clear, so that by the time you go out, this section you will go from bent legs to straight legs. And it's kind of like he swings the hip and, the, and he straightens the leg to get that forward momentum into this. Right now, it feels a bit magical how he hangs on to this. And then suddenly, there's more momentum going forward. That would initiate that momentum a bit more with the legs and the hips. That's cool. And I think that sudden drop there over one frame. There's something where I would... I almost feel like you want to delay that by a frame. Yeah, it's pretty fast. There's just something that feels very poppy as you go down. And I'm mostly reacting to the relationship with that head angle. The irritation is always the same. This all kind of stays the same for quite some time. And then it pops down over one frame. Even here, you could have a drag in the head. But then once you go up here, there's something again in that head where you have some stretch, but then it gets into this, and then it kind of stays put. There's something about that sudden move. And then when you go up here, where I feel like either you want to bring the head back a bit, open the mouth, just do a bit of a... There's something where you have already that ginormous move, which I still think is a bit poppy. You can probably reduce this by a little bit. That's just me. But there's something of, let's pretend this all stays and you got that, that, that sudden snap. There's something about this face never really changing that makes this look weird. Again, this is very subjective, but I feel like once you go into here, you could go into a little bit of a open eyes, open jaw, just more in the face. That has just a, a change and then you get into this and i know you have it here but it's just something where it feels just so especially through here which feels almost bored i don't know there's something where i feel like you could do more during that hold since you have a hold i do like it here because it's so fast and it gives us a bit of a change and you can just kind of feel it as it goes through that's cool i'm a big fan of that Careful here, this feels a bit weird, just visually, how everything moves to the right. And then we have a bit of a stickiness in that framing. It always kind of stays and just gets away from us. And then suddenly it pops forward and then stops again. Let's be careful here, spacing wise. You might have to move the camera a bit so that you can have this more gradual, fluid transition into that, into that stop. There's just something visually in 2D, 2D space how Big shape going forward, forward, and then receding away from us while not really going forward anymore. And then suddenly popping here to this. And probably with all that forward momentum, here I would cheat and bring that, that head out here. Even if that elongates, uh, elongates the neck, but there's so much momentum. And it stops and it puts that arm here to stop that momentum that I think the the rest up here would still have more momentum forward. Maybe the hair can go forward a bit. It's going to cheat that a little bit. And then into that stop. And then back to this here. There's a big arm move. And I see something in Y. But I think you can push that this way in the shoulder a bit. There's something about this feeling very separate. Even though I see movement because I see the texture on that chest here getting bigger. But even through that, I'll probably bring that elbow in a bit. Just feeling how arm reaches up, 
involves a, a rotation up in the chest and then that will influence this i just feel like once you get to here this is a shape that doesn't really go away despite movement here just a bit more connected body mechanics all right i think that's it the end is cool i like the roar Might even experiment with it once you hit this. Here's that line, and then rah, at the end, that line is up here. Just a little bit of up in the chest, translating up, but also just rotating the head up a bit. It's just a bit more. Rah. Right now, it just feels like I hit this pose, and I'm holding it, and I'm just adding shake. Versus I'm starting somewhere and ending somewhere else a little bit to continue that aggression and movement forward. Right, so that that line would basically like this to me would be here, a bit forward and a bit up, and it's subtle, just a little bit. All right, I think that is it for me. I'm looking at that last pose. I wonder if you want to do a little bit out this way. How far are we at the end? Okay, he's got this. It has a nice lean forward. I'm just curious, how would it be if that arm, you know, if it was here, to give this a bit more of a triangular shape for a bit more strength? You still have that nice line of action there. I'm just curious. This could be something to explore. And it also takes away a bit from almost the parallelness of it. Um, I wonder if that... And then with that line, I don't know, there's something that would nicely flow into, into the head. So that you put that potentially even bring the shoulder in a bit more. Um, well, where it's something where you might have that. So you have, that's your outline. So you got that negative space there. But then overall gives you not that much of a bump there. It's all streamlined in, into that head. All right, that is it. I'm going to be quiet now. It's a long critique. I hope it was helpful. And that's it. All right, thanks. All right, there's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.